Well, in this video, I'm just going to discuss briefly, you know, there's different ways, you know, atheists or evolutionary biologists will argue for evolutionary evolution and the way creationists argue for creationism and, you know, and how they try to disprove each other. Before I begin, of course, feel free to check out the description, feel free to like or leave a comment. Feel free to, if you leave a comment, that's fine. I don't read comments because I just don't, I don't care for them. I don't read them. But, you know, feel free to subscribe or whatever else you want to do. But I'll briefly, because this video doesn't need to be long, because it's not like point one, point two, point three, point four, point five. There's no point in that. Creationists will start with them. It's very simple. They don't present any facts for creationism or intelligent design. They will not do that. What they do is attack evolution. That's all they do. It's the same, you know, with social justice warriors, for example, you know. They always call their opponents racist and sexist and homophobic. It's because they have no real concrete argument. They've already lost before they began. And that's how it is with the Christianists, intelligent design, social justice warriors. They lost before they began. Because when you have to insult your opponent and criticize what their beliefs and their theories without presenting facts for your own, you've pretty much already lost. Especially if you don't really know what the other side is saying. Now, how do atheists and evolutionary biologists present facts? Do they insult creationism? creationism? Atheists may do it. Evolutionary biologists usually don't. Now, you can be an atheist or a Christian or a Muslim and still support evolutionary biology. But usually, people that support evolutionary biology will just simply provide you with facts and figures that Point you to the fossil record, genetics, molecular biology, you know, anthropology, all these other fields of science. You know, you, you know, we can read the um, why evolution is true by uh, what's the guy's name? I can't remember his name, so I want to give you a correct name. So let me just pause this one quick. By Jerry Cohn, C O Y N E. I didn't want to miss say his wrong name. I had the name correct in my head, but I just don't want to give you guys wrong name. Now, creationists and intelligent design, they'll give you facts and figures too, but it doesn't make sense. Like, the chances of this forming is 1 in 124,000, 10 to 124, or this is... How are they getting those numbers? How do they get that information? They don't tell you, because they're making it up. They're just pulling it out of their ass, basically. That's, you know, what you'll get. There's a book, I believe it's called Darwin's Doubt. <laughs> yeah, Darwin's Doubt, I believe that's the name of the book. By who's the author? Stephen Meyer? Is this the guy I'm talking, thinking about? Well, it's, he's one of them, but he's not the main one. There's another one. One second, sorry. Sorry about that. It's, it's Undeniable by Douglas Sachs, not Deniable by Bill Meyer. By my Bill Nye, sorry about that. It's Undeniable by Doug, Douglas Sachs. He'll tell you he's a PhD, has a PhD in molecular biology. And, you know, if you look at his credentials and everything, it's pretty rock solid. But he does the, you know, gives you the, pretty much the entire book is nothing but facts and figures. Just of this happening is one in a billion, one in ten to this. Where, is, where are they getting those numbers? They're making them up. Because they can't, that's why they don't ever tell you where they're getting the numbers. They don't give you a citation. Well, uh, according to the Journal of astrophysics, you know, the chances of this star forming in this way, you know, is 10 to 350 billion, or a cell forming, you know. The reason why they can't is because we only have one example of a planet with life, and that's Earth. So there's really no way to know what are the chances of life forming on another planet, or an Earth-like planet forming. We can't possibly know that at this point in time, so they're just making up all that nonsense. Because there is no way to know when you only have one example. We only know of one planet at this point that has life, and that's Earth. And most likely, none of us are going to be alive when we find life on another planet. Maybe bacterial life. There may not be any advanced life. There may not be intelligent life anywhere near us. And may, the nearest planet with intelligent life could be 10 billion light years away, and we will never find them. And they'll never find us, no matter how advanced we are or they are. I mean, think about the impossibility. But then again, like I said, I'm making the, uh, the fact that I just said that should tell you that that's an opinion. I do not know if they could find each other. You don't know what technology could come up with. 
but, but they give their opinion as fact. You know, well, the chances of this forming, you know, it's like listening to these social justice warriors again. You know, they'll give you certain facts, but when you test them out, you know, they don't really make sense. Like, for example, we'll use the wage gap. You know, they'll tell you, well, women make less than men, and one group will tell you 66%, another one 77%. Of course, they're making up the numbers, and they don't tell you why there's a slight discrepancy with men and women, you know, wage. You know, like men usually on the job longer, men take the more dangerous jobs, women, you know, usually go on maternity leave, and things like that, you know, are being factored in. It's really, but on the same job, they have the same experience, they make the same amount of money. You know, you think about it logically, okay? We have the Equal Opportunity Law that was signed, I believe, in 1964. So if a woman is making less on a particular job than her male counterparts, why doesn't she sue? She would win. That's the same when these um, creationists and intelligent design opponents tell you what the chances of this particular po protein folding in this particular way is 10 to 124. How do you know that? Where are you getting this information? Can you give me your source? Of course I can't. Because they don't know. They'll tell you, well, in fact, the way the universe is formed is this. How do you know? For all we know, this is the only way. The laws of physics, the way they are, is the only way they could be. That's why there's a big difference with creations. And which people support evolutionary biology. Evolutionary biologists biology can give you facts and figures. They can point you to things that they can prove. Not only that, is they put their information out there for other scientists to rip apart. Peer-reviewed journals. Do you know how difficult it is to get a work peer-reviewed? Trust me, it is not easy. If you go to a research university like I did, you even have to do actual research. You know, and you have to present, and this was hard, present your information to other scientists. And one of the instructors I had was in a graduate course, Developmental Biology. What she did, she grabbed professors from the English department, history department, and brought them in there. We had to present our project in such a way that they could understand us. Now, you listen you, to creationists and evolutionists. They don't do the same thing. They won't do the same thing. There's no peer review. The Bible is not going to be peer reviewed or the Koran. Oh well, there's not a whole lot more I can say unless you just want to hear me babble and I seriously much doubt that. I'm sure my voice is annoying enough. Thanks.